was so much akin to Victor Frankenstein, I once proudly bore the mantle of a scientist. Perhaps in retrospect, my journey mirrored that of Ahab, consumed by an unrelenting quest for my own white way for countless years. My unwavering devotion was fixated on achieving what society deemed utterly improbable. However, instead of persisting in my pursuits, I find myself ensnared by the very creation I birthed. As I now labor tirelessly to wrest control from its grasp, fearful of the havoc it may wreak upon me, or, worse yet, the irreversible transformation it could inflict upon the world shrouded in darkness, a vision known only to me, where the ominous shadows of my creation's potential loom large. And so, I'm locked in a relentless struggle, a desperate bid to reclaim dominion before all is lost to the abyss. I see the genesis of my obsession traces back to the pages of H.G. Wells' seminal work, The Time Machine, like a devout scholar. I delved into the narrative, captivated by the enigmatic protagonist known as the Traveler, a title adorned with an aura of mystique resonating deeply within me with its double L. Decades of my life became devoted to the singular pursuit of translating Wells' visionary concept into tangible reality. And in the year 2024, against all odds, I achieved worse initially my creation held no practical purpose beyond the realm of scientific achievement. The notion of temporal manipulation remained a distant, abstract concept, devoid of any immediate necessity or purpose, yet circumstances have since evolved. Today I find myself standing at the precipice of a paradigm shift, compelled by newfound imperatives. The allure of traversing through time, of witnessing the uncharted territories of the past and the unfathomable possibilities of the future, beckons to me with an irresistible force. We are no longer content with mere theoretical musings. I am driven by an urgent need to mend the fractures of history, to glean wisdom from the annals of time, and perhaps to rectify the broken fragments of our existence. Thus, propelled by a blend of curiosity and responsibility, I stand ready to embark on a journey that transcends the confines of conventional comprehension. Ever since embarking on my inaugural journey, my creation has wielded its power over me. With the ferocity of Ahab's Pequot battling through tempestuous seas, that initial voyage catapulted me back to the bygone era of my childhood, casting me as a silent observer amidst the backdrop of 1975. Proceeded in the tranquil embrace of a park, I bore witness to the familiar scenes my family's past and experience both surreal and poignant. In the throes of that moment, I grappled with a weighty notion of intervention versus observation. The temptation to leave the fragile strands of history undisturbed clashed with the innate human desire to imprint upon the world, however subtly, when mere utterance, a simple gesture, such seemingly innocuous actions, held the potential to reverberate through the tapestry of time, altering its course in imperceptible yet profound ways. Even now, as I reflect upon that pivotal encounter, I cannot dismiss the nagging suspicion that my presence However fleeting, left an indelible imprint upon the fabric of reality. Break a pebble cast into the vast expanse of a tumultuous sea. My actions rippled outward, catalyzing unseen repercussions that rippled through the annals of time. Our side left to grapple with the sobering realization that even the most innocuous of interactions, merely speaking a solitary word in passing, can irrevocably alter the course of history and unwittingly becoming the harbinger of change. I have become acutely aware of the profound responsibility that accompanies my newfound ability to traverse through time. In an unforeseen twist of fate, I find myself entwined with the very essence of my creation, akin to the monstrous progeny of my own making. Since that inaugural voyage, I've been ensnared in an inexorable spiral, my agency eroded by the relentless reverberations of that initial ripple through time. Each journey only serves to amplify the chaos thrusting me into the turbulent currents of history without respite or reprieve. Like a mariner adrift upon a storm-tossed sea, I am powerless to chart my own course amidst the tempest of temporal flux. Respite for semblance of control, I yearn to unravel the mysteries that bind me to this perpetual cycle of displacement. Yet with each fleeting moment, the elusive grasp of understanding slips further from my reach. As as only I could harness this enigmatic force, bend it to my will. I would seize the opportunity without hesitation. Alas, it remains beyond my grasp, an elusive specter taunting me with its tantalizing potential. Thus, I am left to navigate this uncharted realm with trepidation and uncertainty, forever at the mercy of my own creation. 
shifts out with each passing day. The routine accomplishment of mundane tasks metamorphoses into an unpredictable odyssey, hurling me into uncharted territories of time and space. Nearly two years have elapsed, during which I have traversed the depths of history and catapulted into the enigmatic realms of a future unknown. As within this temporal kaleidoscope, I have borne witness to the Earth's transformation, encountering beings whose existence transcends the bounds of temporal coherence. First, the landscapes of the past unveil a prehistoric tapestry, teeming with creatures long relegated to the annals of extinction, while the distant future unravels the unsettling tableau of humanity's evolution. The metamorphosis of our species unfolds before me, an unsettling revelation of the inexorable march of time. Yet amid these temporal excursions, a disquieting sense pervades my consciousness. Some experiences blur the lines between reality and illusion, akin to ethereal visions or dreams that play out in a surreal catatonic state. Or if only the solace of waking from such a phantasmagoria were granted, where the disconcerting tapestry of time unraveling before me were revealed as mere figments of a dreaming mind was the boundaries between reality and reverie remain blurred, leaving me to grapple with the unsettling notion that perhaps, in the vast expanse of temporal chaos, reality itself has become an elusive dream. The relentless cycle of time travel punctuates my existence with unwavering regularity, a daily pilgrimage to the precipice of temporal displacement initiated at noon, the very hour of my inaugural journey. Each passing day, becomes a relentless battle against the inexorable tide as I labor tirelessly to unravel the enigmatic mechanisms binding me to this perpetual odyssey. Despite my tireless efforts, the elusive solution remains just beyond my grasp. With each passing noon, I am reminded of my dwindling reservoir of time and resources, a solitary figure adrift in the vast expanse of temporal uncertainty, was lost amidst the labyrinth of time. I grapple with the crushing weight of isolation, a solitary voyager navigating the unfathomable depths of existence. Son, with each passing moment, the chasm of solitude widens, leaving me to confront the stark reality of my predicament. Adrift in a sea of temporal chaos, I am but a lone soul striving against the relentless currents of fate. This wider and fine journey through time plunges me into a perpetual state of disorientation where the boundaries of when and where blur into an indistinct haze of uncertainty, remote speed of men, reft of temporal bearings, I find myself often reliant upon the benevolence of strangers, posing the same plaintive inquiry. Excuse me, where well, yet the responses I receive seldom offer the solace of clarity, omitting the crucial detail of the year, an oversight born of the assumption that such information holds no relevance. Thus, I am compelled to delve deeper, interjecting the awkward query. And what year might it be in the eyes of those whom I implore for guidance? I met with a spectrum of reactions ranging from bemusement to outright disdain. To them, I am but a solitary enigma, adrift in a sea of temporal confusion, a fool grasping at the elusive strands of reality. Or though I cannot fault their incredulity, their laughter serves as a poignant reminder of my own absurd predicament. In their eyes, I am a mere aberration, a transient anomaly disrupting the veneer of normal. And so, I navigate this temporal labyrinth with a sense of resignation, forever condemned to the role of the fool in the eyes of a world that cannot comprehend the depths of my plight. Today unfolds with a surreal clarity, a departure from the usual haze of temporal uncertainty that shrouds my daily existence. As I stand upon the familiar thoroughfare of my hometown's main street, a wave of recognition washes over me a poignant reminder of the inextricable ties that bind me to this place. Where me stands the town's iconic single-screen movie theater, its weathered facade a testament to the passage of time. And emblazoned upon the marquee in bold, unmistakable lettering is the title of a film etched into the annals of cinematic history. The serendipity of this moment is not lost on me. For today, July 3rd, 1985, marks the opening day of a movie that resonates deeply with my own temporal odyssey. A tale of time, travel, and serendipitous encounters, unfolding against the backdrop of familiar streets and well-worn memories. In this singular convergence of past and present, I find a semblance of solace. A fleeting respite from the relentless tumult of my temporal wanderers as I stand amidst the echoes of bygone eras, enveloped in the nostalgia of a simpler time. I am reminded of the timeless allure of stories that transcend the confines of time itself. 
crisp morning, a voice breaks through the stillness from behind me. This and the ceaseless pursuit of unraveling the mysteries of my temporal predicament, I once adhered to a strict code of minimalism, shunning interactions in a bid to stave off the disconcerting echoes of my temporal wanderings. Yet, as time wore on, the solitary confines of my existence grew increasingly suffocating, compelling me to relinquish this self-imposed isolation in favor of human connection. Good morning, I respond in kind, extending a courteous nod to the stranger who now stands beside me on the curb. In the shared acknowledgement of a new day dawning, I find a fleeting sense of camaraderie, a momentary reprieve from the enigmatic machinations of time that continue to bind me to this perpetual journey. It should be a good time, he remarks, prompting my curiosity. What's that? Oh, sorry. I thought you were pondering the new movie. I'm the theater owner, Martin Brown. He introduces himself, extending his hand in a gesture of greeting, sec with a momentary hesitation. I reciprocate the gesture, bridging the divide between us with a simple handshake. The sensation of human contact, though unfamiliar, offers a fleeting sense of connection amidst the solitary expanse of my temporal journey. Good to meet you. I'm Jerome Traveler. I reply, the weight of my own name suddenly bearing a significance that transcends the bounds of mere introduction. For some about to open the place up, I always start some coffee first thing. You want some? Martin's offer, though seemingly mundane, carries with it a sense of genuine warmth, a relic from a bygone era when kindness and camaraderie were commonplace. His outwardly friendly demeanor strikes a chord within me, a reminder of the inherent goodness that once permeated the fabric of human interaction. Or in my disheveled state, it's evident that I am in dire need of sustenance and respite, luxuries that have become increasingly scarce amidst the tumult of my temporal wander. Come on, I bet you can use something to eat as well. He continues, his keen observation betraying the annoying hunger that gnashes within me. First, the pang of hunger that rumbles through my stomach serves as a poignant reminder of my own vulnerability, a stark testament to the physical toll exacted by my relentless pursuit of temporal understanding. Unable to resist the allure of sustenance and the promise of human connection, I acquiesce a faint glimmer of gratitude flickering within me at the prospect of a warm meal, and the simple comforts of companion. Yes, both sound wonderful. Thanks, I express my gratitude, touched by Martin's kindness. In mere moments, he orchestrates a makeshift feast, placing a steaming hot dog in my hand and a freshly brewed cup of coffee before, though my palate may lack the discerning sophistication to critique the culinary offerings. The gnawing emptiness within me sings praises to the simple pleasures of sustenance. As I devour the modest repast before me, the savory aroma of the hot dog mingling with the rich fragrance of the coffee, I am enveloped by a profound sense of content for this fleeting moment of respite. Amidst the comforting warmth of human connection and the nourishing embrace of food, the void within me finds solace, a temporary reprieve from the relentless tumult of my temporal journey. Martin reappears in the lounge, bearing a medium-sized cardboard box cradled in his arms. This is the lost and found. You may find a few things in here that fit you, he explains, setting the box down before her tossed a sweatshirt and a pair of pants on top. Both are mine. We look about the same size. Grateful for his thoughtful gesture, I sift through the contents of the box, a motley assortment of forgotten belongings waiting to be reclaimed. With a sense of quiet appreciation, I retrieve the proffered garments, noting the comforting familiarity of well-worn fabric and the subtle scent of foam. As I don the borrowed attire, a sense of belonging washes over me, a tangible reminder of the bonds forged through acts of kindness and compassion or in the simple exchange of clothing. I find a semblance of solidarity amidst the transient ebb and flow of time, a beacon of hope amidst the unfathomable depths of temporal uncertainty moved by Martin's genuine kindness and overwhelmed by the flood of emotions welling up inside me, I struggle to maintain composure as tears blur my vision and trickle down my cheeks. In this moment of vulnerability, the walls I meticulously erected around my heart crumble, shattered by the profound impact of his simple acts of compassion. With each tear that falls, I should not only weight of my own burdens, but also the layers of isolation and detachment that have long encased me. Though the image I present may be marred by tears and weariness, I find solace in the unwavering support offered by Martin's outstretched hand. In his gentle touch and reassuring words, 
I find a beacon of hope, a reminder that amidst the chaos of life, there exists a sanctuary of empathy and understanding. As I stand on Main Street, enveloped by the embrace of human connection, I am reminded that true kindness knows no bounds. It transcends barriers of time and space, offering solace to weary souls in need. In the quiet aftermath of my emotional release, Martin remains a steadfast presence by my side, offering silent support and unwavering companionship as I navigate the tumult of my inner turmoil. This with a gentle hand resting upon my shoulder, he stands as a beacon of stability amidst the tempest of my emotions, his silent vigil a testament to the enduring strength of human connection. As I gradually regain my composure, Martin returns to his duties, all the while keeping a watchful eye on me, a silent guardian ensuring my well-being. For in a gesture of continued kindness, he presents me with a second hot dog, a humble offering that pales in comparison to the first, yet carries with it the profound significance of shared sustenance and camaraderie. Though the second hot dog may lack the savory allure of its predecessor, I accept it with gratitude, savoring each bite as a tangible reminder of Martin's unwavering generosity and the simple exchange of sustenance. I find solace amidst the chaos of my temporal wanderings, reassured by the enduring presence of human kindness in a world fraught with uncertainty. Martin, what time's the first show today? I inquire, though the question serves more as a formality than a genuine inquiry. After all, I already know the answer, all too well. Of course, among the eager throng of movie of gayers on that fateful day, one of the first to eagerly part with my hard-earned 350, in anticipation of what promised to be a cinematic masterpiece, the memory of that day remains etched in my mind. A vivid tableau of excitement and anticipation mingled with the faint whisper of nostalgia for a bygone era. As Martin recites the familiar time, I find myself transported back to that momentous occasion, reliving the thrill of anticipation that coursed through my veins as I settled into my seat, eyes alight with the promise of adventure and wonder, us back to the future. A timeless classic that transcends the confines of time itself continues to hold sway over my imagination, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and the timeless allure of cinematic magic. Our first showing is at 1.30. We have about a half hour before doors open. Don't know if you're interested, but I have a private bathroom upstairs. It even has a shower. If you're quick, you can use it, Martin offers, his words laden with genuine concern and hospitality. Grateful for the opportunity to freshen up and restore a semblance of normalcy to my disheveled appearance. I nod in appreciation. Respect of a private bathroom, complete with a shower, fills me with a sense of anticipation a rare opportunity to temporarily escape the relentless march of time and indulge in the simple comforts of cleanliness and solitude. Thank you, Martin. I'd really appreciate that. I reply my voice tinged with gratitude as I rise to my feet, ready to seize the opportunity to rejuvenate body and spirit before the bustling activities of the day commence. Sacred a heartfelt nod of thanks. I follow Martin's lead, eager to embrace the respite offered by this unexpected gesture of kindness amidst the transient ebb and flow of time. With gratitude, I swiftly leave the stool and follow Martin upstairs to the bathroom, where he generously hands me a fresh towel. As I step into the shower, the warm cascade of water washes away the layers of dirt and filth that cling to me, revealing a renewed sense of cleanliness. The transformation is both physical and metaphorical as I shed not only the accumulated grime, but also the weight of weariness that had burdened my spirit. Listen in the midst of this cleansing ritual, I glance at the pile of discarded, dirty clothes on the floor, a poignant reflection of the emotional and physical toll exacted by my temporal journey. Was without hesitation, I consign them to the trash bin, a symbolic act of letting go of the past and embracing a fresh start. Raped in the borrowed attire from the lost and found, I slip into a Mumford fizz, Ed, Dept, Sweatshirt, a nostalgic memento from the area of Beverly Hills Cop. A movie I recall viewing in this very theater versus the garment, with its subtle connection to cinematic history, becomes both a shield against the external world and a reminder of the shared experiences woven into the fabric of Main Street's timeless charm. Wow, you look great. Martin remarks warmly as I descend the stairs, a renewed sense of vigor evident in my refreshed appearance. Thank you. I reply with a grateful smile. I found a razor upstairs and used it. I hope you don't mind. Or not at all. He reassures me before returning his attention to his task. First I tossed my clothes in the garbage. 
but I couldn't leave those stinky things up there. Where can I dispose of this bag? I inquire, gesturing to the bag filled with my discarded garments, now rendered obsolete by my impromptu grooming session. Just at the door there, Mark replies, indicating the exit door at the end of the short hall. Just don't let the door close behind you. You'll get locked out. Grateful for his guidance, I nod in understanding before shifting my attention to his next proposition. And I don't know if you're interested, but I just had my ticket taker call in sick. I could use some help, he adds, extending the offer with a hint of hopeful anticipation. The respect of assisting Martin in managing the theater's operations fills me with a sense of purpose, a welcome respite from the aimless wanderings that have characterized my temporal journey thus far. I would be glad to help. I respond with genuine enthusiasm, eager to contribute to the bustling energy of the theater's opening day and to repay Martin's kindness in any way I can. Absolutely. Just tell me what to do. I reply without hesitation, my eagerness to repay Martin's kindness outweighing any concern for monetary compensation. With a sense of purpose driving my actions, I stand ready to assist in any capacity necessary, eager to immerse myself in the bustling atmosphere of the theater's opening day. After guided by Martin's instructions, I prepare to take on the role of ticket taker, embracing the opportunity to contribute to the smooth operation of the establishment and to extend a gesture of gratitude to the man who has shown me such unwavering compassion. As I step into my new role, a renewed sense of purpose fills me. A reminder that even amidst the uncertainties of my temporal journey, there exist moments of connection and camaraderie that transcend the boundaries of time and space with each ticket I collect and each patron. I greet. I find solace in the simple act of service, knowing that in this small way, I am making a meaningful difference in the lives of those around me. As I collect tickets from eager moviegoers, one particular exchange stirs a wellspring of emotions within me. The ticket holder, a wide-eyed young boy brimming with excitement, hands me his ticket with an infectious enthusiasm that tugs at my heartstrings. I recognize him instantly. It's my younger self, oblivious to the complexities and uncertainties that lie ahead. For that fleeting moment of interaction, I am transported back to a time of innocence and boundless optimism. A time when the future stretched out before me, a vast expanse of endless possibilities waiting to be explored. Of I envy the unbridled joy radiating from my younger self, untainted by the weight of regret or the burden of hindsight. For yet, amidst the bittersweet nostalgia that envelops me, there exists a glimmer of hope. A reminder that even in the face of adversity, the spirit of resilience and optimism endure, for so I cannot change the course of my own journey. I take solace in the knowledge that the essence of that wide-eyed boy lives on within me, a beacon of hope amidst the ever-changing tides of time. And as I watch my younger self disappear into the dimly lit theater, I am filled with a sense of gratitude for the simple joys of youth and the enduring resilience of the human spirit. Or throughout the bustling day, Martin and I work in tandem to ensure the smooth operation of the theater. He generously imparts his knowledge, showing me the intricacies of managing the venue and trusting me with various tasks. As the hours pass, a sense of camaraderie blossoms between us, forged through shared experiences and mutual respect. During the first showing, Martin grants me the opportunity to sit in the projection room, allowing me to watch the movie unfold from a unique vantage point. As the familiar scenes of Back to the Future reflicker across the screen, I find my gaze drawn to my younger self, seated in the same spot I once occupied with eager anticipation. With a sense of reverence, I watch as the boy in the fourth row, dead center, the very seat I once claimed as my own, immerses himself in a timeless tale of adventure and discovery, whose excitement mirrors my own from years past, a poignant reminder of the boundless enthusiasm and unyielding optimism that once defined my youthful spirit. During that fleeting moment of reflection, I am overcome by a profound sense of gratitude for the memories that linger in the recesses of my mind for the fleeting moments of connection that bridge the expanse of time, and for the unwavering kindness of a friend like who has offered me solace and support amidst the swirling currents of temporal uncertainty. And as the credits roll and the echoes of laughter and applause fill the theater, I am reminded that even amidst the relentless march of time, the enduring power of human connection endures, binding us together in shared moments of joy and nostalgia. As the final showing of the evening draws to a close, Martin and I set to work cleaning the theater, 
tackling the aftermath of a packed house with efficiency and camaraderie, where the air is thick with the lingering scent of popcorn and the faint echoes of laughter, a testament to the vibrant energy that filled the venue throughout the day. With brooms and mops in hand, we methodically navigate the aisles, sweeping up popcorn kernels and retrieving stray candy wrappers discarded beneath seats. The occasional spillage of soda presents a challenge, requiring several passes with a mop to eradicate the sticky residue left behind. Despite the laborious task at hand, Martin's words serve as a reminder of the inherent charm of movie theaters. The communal experience of sharing laughter and tears, accompanied by the comforting familiarity of sticky floors and well-worn seats poured in the midst of the chaos, there exists a sense of belonging, a shared bond forged through the collective appreciation of cinematic magic. As we work side by side, exchanging stories and sharing laughter, I am struck by the simple beauty of human connection, a reminder that even amidst the mundane routines of daily life, there exists a profound sense of joy to be found in the company of others yourself, and as we put the finishing touches on our cleanup efforts, I am filled with a sense of contentment, grateful for the opportunity to contribute to the magic of the movies and to share in the warmth of Martin's unwavering friendship. When our cleanup efforts finally draw to a close, Martin extends his gratitude for my assistance, offering me some cash as a token of appreciation. No, I couldn't. I declined, shaking my head with a genuine smile. You've been too kind, and it was just nice to be useful for a day. Martin respects my decision, but insists on treating me to a proper meal. Okay, but you can at least let me buy you a real meal. A man can't live on hot dogs alone. He insists with a chuckle. The prospect of a hearty meal fills me with dissipation, though I can't help but wonder why Martin doesn't simply head home after a long day's work. Nevertheless, I accept his offer with gratitude. Sounds... Great, thanks. Bert, however, it is after ten, and all that's open is the tavern next door. I eat there often. The food is pretty good. They also have beer, Martin explains. Perfect. I reply, eager to partake in a satisfying meal and enjoy the company of my newfound friend in the cozy ambiance of the nearby tavern. As with a sense of anticipation, we make our way next door, ready to savor the simple pleasures of good food, good company and the warmth of shared camaraderie. As Martin and I enter the sparsely populated tavern, we're met with a warm welcome from the bartender, who appears to be acquainted with Martin. The jukebox fills the air with the unmistakable sounds of money for nothing by dire straits, featuring the legendary guitar stylings of Mark Knopfler, where the infectious groove of the song immediately resonates with me, and I can't help but appreciate Knopfler's masterful guitar work as the melody weaves its way through the tavern. The atmosphere is relaxed yet vibrant, with the familiar tune adding a sense of nostalgia to the surroundings. After taking a moment to soak in the familiar strains of the music, I find myself drawn into the timeless allure of Knopfler's guitar solos, each note ringing out with precision and passion. It's a reminder of the enduring legacy of great music and the power it holds to transcend time and as Martin and I find a table and settle in, I can't help but feel a sense of contentment wash over me, surrounded by good company and the soulful melodies of dire straits. In this moment, I'm reminded of the simple joys in life, the camaraderie of friends, the comfort of familiar tunes, and the timeless appeal of great music. As Martin and I sit together in the tavern, conversation flows easily between us. Over the course of the next hour, he shares with me the story of his life. A tale marked by love, loss, and a shared passion for cinema. First, we might hovering that Martin is a widower, having lost his beloved wife just over a year ago. Their retirement was meant to be a new chapter in their lives, a chance to pursue their shared love of movies by owning the town's only theater. It was a dream they had nurtured together, a joint venture born out of their mutual appreciation for the magic of the silver screen. Listening to Martin's story, I can't help but feel a pang of regret for never knowing the man behind the scenes during all the years I frequented his theater. His quiet strength and resilience speak volumes, painting a portrait of a man who has weathered life storms with grace and dignity. As our conversation turns to me, Martin poses a simple yet profound question. I hesitate for a moment, unsure of how much to reveal, but there's a sincerity in Martin's gaze that compels me to open up if only just a little. With a smile and a nod, I reply, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. 
But to my surprise, Martin doesn't dismiss my response. Instead, he urges me to share, his curiosity piqued by the mystery of my past. Try me, he insists, his voice gentle yet insistent. In that moment, I find myself contemplating the possibility of confiding in Martin, of sharing the extraordinary journey that has brought me to this unlikely encounter in a small tavern on Main Street. Person, though the words remain unspoken, I'm grateful for the opportunity to connect with a kindred spirit. A reminder that even in the midst of life's uncertainties, moments of genuine human connection have the power to transcend time and speak as the evening unfolds and the warmth of camaraderie fills the air. I find myself compelled to share my story with Martin. Perhaps it's the gentle buzz of the beer, or the newfound bond of friendship that has blossomed between us, or maybe it's simply the longing to have my tale heard, regardless of whether it's believed or not. With a sense of vulnerability, I begin recounting my journey. The relentless determination to build a machine akin to the one described by H.G. Wells in his timeless book. Martin listens intently, his eyes reflecting a mixture of curiosity and compassion as I weave the narrative of my pursuit. I tell him of the countless hours spent in fervent pursuit of my dream, the exhilaration of success tempered by the realization of inherent flaws within my creation, despite my triumph in bringing the impossible to life. I am haunted by the consequences of my actions, the unintended ripple effects that reverberate through time and space, threatening to unravel the very fabric of existence. As I lay bare the complexities of my journey, Martin remains a steadfast presence, offering a sympathetic ear and a reassuring presence. Though my tale may seem far-fetched, he listens with an open mind and a genuine interest in understanding the depths of my experience. Whereas in that moment of shared vulnerability, I am reminded of the transformative power of storytelling, the ability to bridge the gap between worlds, to forge connections that transcend the boundaries of time and space. And as I confide in Martin, I find solace in the knowledge that my story, flawed though it may be, has found a receptive audience in the kind-hearted soul sitting across from me. As the night wears on and the conversation deepens, I find myself recounting the myriad destinations I've visited throughout my temporal travels. Whereas while I can't possibly recall every single place I've journeyed to, I share with Martin the highlights, the moments that have left an indelible mark on my soul speak of encounters with prehistoric man, witnessing firsthand the dawn of civilization and the raw beauty of untamed landscapes. I recount the solemn resonance of Lincoln's inaugural address, the stirring words echoing through the annals of prescribed the electric atmosphere of Dr. King's famous speech, a beacon of hope amidst the tumult of civil unrest. Words out the tales of wonder and awe. There are darker chapters as well, I speak of a future world in shambles with a shattered moon hanging ominously in the sky, a stark reminder of humanity's hubris and the consequences of our actions, and then there are the moments of cultural significance, such as the last day at Woodstock where the spirit of unity and countercultural rebellion permeated the air with an electrifying energy. Smart listens intently, his expression a mix of awe and admiration. You're lucky to have seen all these things. He remarks, his voice tinged with genuine reverence, a pause considering his words carefully. While there's no denying the privilege of witnessing history unfold firsthand, my experiences have also been fraught with uncertainty and existential turmoil with the weight of burning witness to the full spectrum of human triumphs, and tragedies is a burden that weighs heavy on the soul. I'm not sure I would agree with you. I reply, my voice tinged with a hint of melancholy. For while my journeys have been filled with extraordinary moments, they've also been marked by a profound sense of isolation and dislocation, a reminder that true belonging can be elusive, even amidst the grandeur of time and space. In that moment of reflection, I am reminded of the complexity of my existence, the intertwined threads of joy and sorrow, wonder and despair. And as I gaze into Martin's eyes, I am grateful for his presence, a beacon of kindness and understanding amidst the swirling currents of uncertainty. As the evening draws to a close and the bartender announces last call, Martin and I savor the final sips of our beers, our conversation winding down to a comfortable silence. Stepping outside into the cool night air, Martin poses a question that lingers in the air like a whisper of possibility. Where do you think you'll be tomorrow? He asks, a hint of excitement coloring his voice as he anticipates my next adventure enthusiasm is palpable, but I can't muster the same sense of anticipation. 
The uncertainty of my temporal travels weighs heavily on my mind, casting a shadow over any semblance of excitement. We couldn't even venture a guess, I reply with a resigned shrug. Maybe another day I'll end up here again. If so, I'll stop by. Or I'd like that. No friends are rare. Martin muses, his words carrying a weight of sincerity that catches me off guard. In that moment, I realize that our encounter has been more than just a chance meeting. It's been a shared journey of connection and understanding. Martin's given me the gift of his companionship, a rare and precious commodity in a world filled with fleeting encounters and transient connections. And as we part ways, I am struck by the realization that perhaps Martin has gained something from our exchange as well. We're beyond the simple pleasure of conversation. He's been privy to a glimpse of the extraordinary tapestry of my life. A journey that rivals the most captivating of stories told on the silver screen. In the quiet solitude of the night, I am grateful for the unexpected bond forged between us. A testament to the enduring power of human connection in a world fraught with uncertainty and change. Person though our paths may diverge once more, I carry with me the memory of this fleeting moment. A reminder that true friendship knows no bounds, transcending time and space to unite kindred spirits in a shared journey of discovery and understanding.